Hello, my name is Brandon, and our story begins when I left Japan to study music in America. Soon enough, though, I shifted my studies from music to industrial design, and started working as a freelance web designer. After I graduated in 2003, it was hard to find a job. I was freelancing for a bit, but I needed to make myself more official, so I decided to start a company in 2004. At the time, I only had an apartment and five thousand dollars in my name. I hired two interns, and three of us walked out of my apartment. This was the start of Btrax. In 2005, I hired another intern. His name was Suguru Nishioka, and he was a student from Academy of Arts. He was such a great designer. I decided to step down as a lead designer. By mid 2005, we were designing websites for local businesses. Our strategy at the time was to look for potential clients in need of a web designer. We were looking everywhere, even job posting on the Craigslist. That's when we found Expedia. Expedia was a very notable company, so I knew this is what my company needed. At this time, Expedia was planning to expand its business to Japan, and was looking for one person to take care of design, coding, and content development. Although they were looking for one person, I responded to the listing and told them that this job was made for a team, and my team is what they were looking for. Expedia responded with the news that my company needed to compete with ten other companies. I was willing to accept the challenge, but I told the internal team that I was the person who suggested they needed a team instead of one person. They saw my point and responded by giving us one week to make an entire website mockup. I told my team failure is not an option, and we worked our ass off that week. We sent in our work, but didn't hear our response back for a while. I decided to call, and we got it. I was communicating with Tim Bessey, one of the founders of Glassdoor, as he was working for Expedia at that time, about moving forward with the project. Suguru and I were invited to attend a three-week bootcamp for Expedia. That's where I met Marsan. He was the first CEO of Expedia Japan, and the person who gave my team our big break. I hired new team members and moved out of our apartment to the building we currently are in. By the end of 2006, everyone left the company because I didn't know how to be a CEO. Honestly, I didn't know how to run a growing business at that time because I only studied design and music in college. The beginning of 2007 didn't look good for Btrax. I was talking to friends and mentors because I simply didn't know what to do. Those talks boiled down to three options: one, scale the business down; two, move forward by hiring more people; or quit. I decided to hire more people with more experience because if it didn't work, I would quit eventually anyway. That's where Masa Iguchi and Tim Wagner joined. Masa, who is currently the owner of one of the top brand design companies in Tokyo, called Infocus, was one of the first interns from Japan. Tim knew a lot about trends, loved networking, and was a great resource. In 2009, Tim started introducing me to some pioneers of the startup age, like Tim Ferriss, Matt with WordPress. Justin with Justin TV, and Dave with 500 Startups. My network began to grow. Btrax began to shift away from web design and focus more on marketing and branding. Tim suggested that Btrax start a blog. I hated the idea, but I cannot say it was a bad idea. We began Fresh Tracks, and it has become a big part of Btrax. 2010 was the start of the huge startup movement. And I began to attend SF New Tech. Startups showcased their products and services. I thought it was a great idea, and something Btrax could host with companies from Japan. That gave me the idea of Japan Night. 
This gave us a lot of exposures in the Japanese market and interest from Japanese companies to work with. In 2011, now Fumitsuchiya joined. He is now the CEO of one of the top design agencies in Japan called Goodpatch. He was very familiar and connected to Japanese startups and helped with many Japanites. In 2012, I went to a barbecue party and met a man named Akihiro Tada. He asked me about the future of B Tracks, and I expressed that I dreamed of having an office in Japan but needed to find someone to help me manage it. Aki offered to be the manager, and I agreed. Together, we created B Tracks Japan. In 2013, we had an opportunity to work with Canon. This project was very familiar to the innovation booster projects that we currently work on. In 2014, Mark joined. He was inspired by our project with Canon and he officially created the innovation booster services. Since IB started, we have gotten to welcome and personally work with many clients. Remember Marsan from Expedia? And in 2014, He joined our team as a senior advisor. In 2015, our landlord told us that they would not renew our lease, so we needed to find a new place. After a few months of struggle to find a space, I talked to the landlord again. And actually, he offered us a bigger space to work in. Our new office was three times as big as our previous one, with much more room. We started a co working space called D House. 2015 is also when our business consultant, John, joined the team. And when we shifted our company's focus from marketing and branding to UX design. Although Japan Night really helped us get business from Japan, we stopped Japan Night and started DFI, Design for Innovation, in Japan in 2016. Also, we partnered up with Fukuoka City and brought over 100 Japanese entrepreneurs to San Francisco and the Silicon Valley. We were experiencing pretty steady growth in 2017, so we started another set of event, Asian Night, where we brought together Asian startups and San Francisco startups. 2018 started off great. We hired JB, who introduced design sprints into our services and made some big internal changes. 2019 has been a year of growth and fun so far. We are excited for what's in store for us. My vision for the future of B Tracks is to work with global brands and start producing innovative products to the world. I look to the future positively, and I'm very grateful for all. Who has made B Tracks what it is today?